Welcome to our first and a more advanced series of Photoshop tutorials. Here we'll talk about some interesting settings and techniques that will get you more acquainted with Photoshop in general. Let's talk about Curves. Curves is a setting in Photoshop that allows you to get richer tones and colors in your pictures. To start, we've opened up our usual coffee image here, and we'll click on the Image drop-down, then Adjustments, then Curves. You can also hit Ctrl plus M at the same time. Doing this will open the Curves window, which looks like a neat graph chart. In the middle, you should be seeing a line going from the bottom left to the top right. If you want to apply a quick preset, which will set the settings for you, you can click the drop-down and change from the default to other settings in the list. Setting the color preset to color negative changes some things here, which we'll explain. As you can see, the individual values on the chart have changed. The original black line is still the same, but each individual color has changed. This is a permanent way to change the values of the image, but if we wanted to make it something a little less permanent and tweak the settings as we edit our image, we can make a new layer by going to Layer, New Adjustment Layer, and then Curves. This will allow us to have our own layer that we can edit the properties of in the Properties window. So over here in our Properties window, you can see that we can edit our curves just like the image edit we were doing before, but it is not permanent as we can hide or unhide the layer using the I button next to the layer. So the main thing to take away from curves is reading the histogram and placing points. We can place points on the histogram so we can change the color changes anywhere in the image, based on the dark spots or the lighter spots of the image. As you can see on our image, the shadows and highlights of our image aren't very great, so we can edit our colors without much interference. So if we put one point in the middle, one point on the end, and one point on the beginning, we can change the colors and alter them in subtle or more advanced ways. Curves help out many Photoshop users with images that have bad contrast or bad lighting. Use curves next time you have an image that needs tweaking. It's one of the most powerful tools in Photoshop's arsenal. Welcome to our second tutorial in our advanced line of Photoshop tutorials. This time we'll talk about some features that are similar to curves, but do things in a more individual way. Brightness, contrast, and exposure. Just like before, we'll start out with our image available. As before, we could alter the image from the image drop-down and brightness and contrast under the adjustments, but we'll create a new layer using Layer, New Adjustment Layer, then Brightness and Contrast. That way we can adjust without permanently changing the image. Once in the Adjustment Layer, we can see that we have a Brightness slider and a Contrast slider. Tweak your image using these settings. Left is less brightness, making it darker. Right is more, making it lighter. Negative contrast washes out the colors, while positive contrast makes the colors stand out more, but it can make the shadows too dark. Next, we'll add an exposure layer. Go to Layer, New Adjustment Layer, then Exposure Layer. Doing this, you can see we have more sliders here. The exposure slider going from negative to positive can darken and lighten the image, much like the previous layers. Offset itself changes the absolute light and darkness in the image, so treat that option with care. Gamma correction allows you to add and subtract gamma, general lighting, to the entire image. It starts out at 1, and going left adds more gamma, while going right subtracts gamma. Using all these options allows you to tweak the image as you see fit, so you can make best use of lighting to get the image you want right for your projects. Welcome to the third advanced tutorial in our Photoshop series. We'll be talking about the Hue and Saturation layer, which works similar to our other layer and adjustment tutorials. Here I have my own image open from before. To set up a Hue and Saturation layer, just like before, we'll go to Layer, New Adjustment Layer, then put a new hue and saturation layer down on top of the original image. So with hue and saturation, we can see that we can adjust the layer's colors, hue. 
the saturation, how deep the colors are, or how light they are to grayscale, or lightness, how dark or light in general the image is. In an image, you can make the colors much more vibrant by sliding the saturation more to the right than usual. Here we can see our copy image stand out much more visually. And if we change the hue towards more of a red spectrum, we can get the copy image to be very strong in color indeed. Use the lightness slider to make sure that things aren't too bright, as extremely vibrant color can be akin to looking into the sun for some viewers of your images. That's all for this tutorial, as you can change images you see fit to make them pop. Welcome to our fourth tutorial in our advanced series. This time, we're going to go with a more exercise-focused approach to help you get more acquainted with what a client wants and needs for their projects. Today's exercise, creating web banner ads for a client. There are many sizes that a client needs for their projects, and when doing web banner ads, you may need to do all or some of them. We'll go over the industry standard so that way you can make the banners needed for your projects. The first size we'll go over is the large leaderboard. It's 970 by 90 pixels. To start, we'll create a new image and then we'll set the width to 970 and the height to 90. That'll give us the dimensions of the image that we want. We'll create a simple white background here. Then apply a quick text add. Make sure your text is in black so it shows up on the background. Write 10 apples for $3.99. To set up the text on the banner, go to Select, Select All, then hit the Center Layer option just below the main menu here. From there, Add an image of an apple. Here I've added a quick image of an apple I found on the net to both sides of the banner to give it more of a friendly look. And if we were to be finished here, this would be the first type of ad we would have to create for our client. Next, let's create a half page ad, which is a 300 pixel by 600 pixel version. First, save our image as a PSD. Now, change our image to a 300 by 600 canvas. Go to Image, Canvas Size, and change the inches drop down to pixels. Here, type in 300 width, 600 height. You'll notice our apples and text is now strangely off screen and our background isn't fully white. We'll fix all of that and show you how to continue to make other sizes of ads. If you notice, the Apple images aren't exactly gone, they're just off screen to the image's canvas. Let's bring those apples back to the top and bottoms of our image now. Then let's use the paint bucket icon on the left and fill in our white background again. Remember to click the correct layer, which should be the first layer in your order. If it helps, name your layers so that you can remember which is which. Now that we have our white background again, what about our text? For that, let us change the spacing by pressing enter on certain parts of the text. Here at Apples should do it. Move the text onto the canvas. And resize the text as necessary. For vertical text, I like to use centered text under the paragraph tab of the font properties for a more pleasing aesthetic. And there you have it. We have a new ad that can save as a separate PNG or JPEG from our original Apple ad. From here, we can create all the rest of the industry standard ad sizes, 160 by 600, 120 by 600, 336 by 280, 
300 by 250, 728 by 90, 468 by 60, 200 by 200, and 250 by 250. See if you can make Apple ads for each one of them. For our next project design tutorial, we'll work on creating some great YouTube channel art for yourself or for any clients using Photoshop. Let's get started with the correct size for YouTube channel art. Open a new file and then set the width to 2560 and the height to 1440. As you start off here, you can see there's a lot of space for you to create some good channel art. What I recommend here is starting out with the theme of your channel or your clients. Is it a science channel? Is it a space theme? You'll need a good background here to show off the tone and mood of the channel in question. Let's assume space is the theme here. I've gone and grabbed a freebie space background here and imported it into the image. With this, with this we can have a nice canvas of art to build the YouTube's mood and image from. Our imaginary space YouTube is called Deep Cosmos, so let's create a great text effect to show off the name of the channel. First, create your text. Make it large enough to be visible. Then set the color by clicking the color part of the properties window and clicking a part of the image. Then we'll go into the Layer Blending option, give it a stroke, then click an Inner Glow effect. I've also used a different font here to give more of a unique look here. The type of font is up to you. I also recommend stacking the text on the right so the rest of the art can breathe and show off the theme for the channel. Add more text in a readable font, probably not cursive. For what the channel is used for, space exploration. Any extra social media links. Why not use any more than two fonts on your images as well, as it is a design error to use too many different fonts. And this will create a very basic YouTube channel art that will evoke a great wonder about what the channel is based around and draw, and draw viewers in with its great visual design. In our next project design tutorial, we'll go over how to make a Facebook ad. Facebook ads are similar to the industry standard ad designs, so we'll go over the basics really quick and then design an ad in a standard size. Single ads are the easiest type to do as the other options Facebook gives you for ads are multiple image ads, video ads, and a few more. As before, we want to open a new image with the correct size. The standard Facebook ad size is 1200 pixels by 618 pixels. Let's open an image with this size now. From here, we'll create an image that really pops for our audience. Let's say we're creating an image for a seafood company. Let's go grab an image of some great lobster dinner. On top of that, you want to make the image have something that stands out for your audience. So adding some text that implies the dinner is irreplaceable or you can't find it anywhere else is to create that type of rarity that clients want their products to have. This is not necessarily true of every ad you make, but a nice quip or message about the product you're advertising will help with the ad itself. We'll add that in. And then we'll touch up the image by adding a quick inner glow filter and adding more of a vignette look by adding a dark glow, but only around the inside edges of the image. After that, you're done and ready to continue making more ads for Facebook pages. These are the ads you typically will see in Facebook feeds. In this project design tutorial, we'll go over how to make a Facebook cover page. Facebook cover pages are similar to our YouTube cover pages in that you can make them as expressive as you or the client wants. As before, we want to open a new image with the correct size. The standard Facebook cover size is 851 pixels by 315 pixels. Let's open an image with this size now. From here, we'll do as we did before and create something a little more exciting like our YouTube cover image. Let's make this one about science and grab a picture of a laboratory background. 
make sure if you use images, you get them from approved sources. No one wants to use copyrighted images in someone else's project. Here we'll add some text, as well as maybe some other social media URLs in our image to give the impression that the page is outside of Facebook as well. Once you've got the look right, it's just as simple as a YouTube cover page. One more thing, if you want to get the ratios right for mobile, make an image that is 640 pixels wide by 360 pixels tall. After that, it's really easy to make more cover pages as you see fit, as well as make sure to save everything as a PSD so you can edit the cover page in case there's errors. Facebook also accepts PNGs for cover pages, so don't worry about compatibility too much. 